Hi, uh, <clears throat> my name is Ted Miron. I am uh, live in Schenectady, New York, and uh, I uh, am a retired research scientist there. I worked there for 43 years, retired about 18 years ago. I came to Schenectady in uh, 1950 from Stanford. I got my Ph.D. in uh, electro electrical engineering and physics, and uh, worked the whole time there at the GE Research Lab. I got interested in the subject of global warming and uh, I it's always seemed to me that talks I heard about it were shy on data. So what we're really concentrating on today is the data behind uh, global climate change. And I hope uh, that uh, you'll be able to follow the slides as we go along. So let's start. We're going to first look at the history of climate change for the past almost half million years and uh, see what information we can glean from that. Uh, there are two main heat sources that we are going to be considering. One is the incident solar radiation, which is the direct radiation we get from the sun that's absorbed on the first pass to the Earth, and then some of it's reflected and the carbon dioxide layer uh, re-reflects it back to Earth. So there, although there's one main source, namely the sun, main heat source, uh, it does sort of come in, in two shots. And which of these is the most important one? Now that is what we're going to be looking for. We'll find that they are both correlated with temperature, uh, but uh, uh, we want to really establish the causality. Uh, be, of these two uh, heat sources. In other words, which one causes the temperature to rise and which one follows the temperature rise. We're going to do this by looking at uh, the periods of uh, uh, cold and uh, the periods between the periods of cold, which are called interglacials, and uh, we'll come to some pretty definite conclusions and also we're going to take a stab at predicting the future. So let's start <clears throat> looking back at the past temperature. Uh, I want to say that these uh, slides are from chapter one of uh, Professor Muller's book, Richard A. Muller at the University of California, uh, called uh, Ice Ages and Astronomical Causes, I believe. And uh, this uh, particular slide, you, uh, incidentally, I thought, I th I think these uh, slides, next five slides we're going to see are, should be uh, memorized by everybody interested in this subject. Uh, the first slide is the one you see most of the time, especially in, in talks uh, by the uh, carbon dioxide people. They say for the past 120 years the temperature has been rising. Uh, there are a couple of dips there, but those are, tend to be ignored and that uh, we should be worrying about this. Well now in the next slide we look back 22,400 years and if you look at the extreme right of this slide you'll see that this is the, the, the previous data we just looked at. There certainly is a rise of temperature there for the past 120 years but you see that's because we were rising out of what is called the Little Ice Age. So the Little Ice Age, which is only a temperature drop of about half a degree centigrade, roughly a degree Fahrenheit, but uh, there's not much of a uh, dip here, but uh, we are rising out of it and we are, we are uh, probably by now up to a plus half a degree. The blue line is the 1950 temperature, incidentally, and we'll see that through all the slides. Other thing that uh, is important to notice here, of course, is that uh, this rise is, is there are many rises that we've had in the past 2,400 years, uh, many of which are steeper than the rise that we've had recently. And uh, if you go back a thousand years, uh, we had a nice warm spot here. And if you go back more than that to the days of the Greeks and the Romans, the temperature was in general warmer than it is today. Uh, can we learn anything else from this curve? It seems to me there's there's not a, any period. We're looking for periodicities, 
and there's nothing that is irregular enough to say that uh, we can learn something from it. So let's just keep our look, keep our uh, keep on looking back. And here we're looking back 12,000 years. The previous graph is in the in the area of these red dots here. Here's the Little Ice Age. You can just barely see it. Uh, in general, we've had this remarkable, very remarkable constancy of temperature, plus or minus within plus or minus a degree for the past 10,000 years. And we're going to come back to this. If we go back. Uh, more than 10,000 years we see this rise <coughs> which uh, actually uh, a very severe rise from uh, 10,000 years ago uh, 12,000 years ago pardon me and uh, let's look at the next slide and here is on the right hand side here is the last uh, 12,000 years and we've we we rose from a temperature that was maybe minus six degrees up to this present plateau that we're on. I like to call this the pedestal. We're sitting on a pedestal, and it is a very marvelous place to be because this was the ice age, and it lasted for about ninety thousand years. So only about ten percent of this time uh, has it been warm enough to. Uh, really enjoy life. Let's uh, continue our look back however and uh, we come to this graph which I think is uh, it's the one if you remember one thing from this talk remember this graph. Here's our present pedestal lovely. Here's the 90,000 years of cold weather we had uh, incidentally, these are from the ice core sample at, at Vostok and uh, in the Antarctic. And uh, of course, they don't measure direct, get temperature directly from these ice cores. They derive it from uh, various uh, isotope measurements that they do. We don't have time to go into that. So we're just taking their word that this is indeed what the temperature was as derived from the ice cores. So we see if we go back 130,000 years, we do uh, have another warm period. It's not as wide as the one we had now, perhaps 5,000 years wide, but it, it immediately uh, came out of, uh, again, about a 90,000 year ice age. Now we had this rather thin peak down into the ice age again, and uh, I call these interglacials zero, that's our present one, minus one, roughly 100,000 years ago, minus two, roughly 200,000 years ago, minus three, roughly 300,000 years ago, and minus four, IG minus four. We're going to come back to these at the end of the talk and discuss them in more detail. So that is the historical data, and it seems to me, uh, I didn't uh, tell you my favorite story, but uh, it, it's, uh, it seems that a New Jersey guy was uh, traveling up in Vermont, and it was in late April, and, and it was snowing. They had a late April snowstorm there, and uh, he stopped for gas and got out of the car, stretched his legs, and the guy is filling his tank, and uh, New Jersey guy says, boy, he says, do you think it'll ever stop snowing? And the Vermont guy looks up, and he says, always has. And so, well, the Vermont guy knew that if you want to know what's going to happen, uh, look to the past, and that's what we're doing. And this is our look at the past. And as I say, if you remember one slide from this talk, remember this slide.